الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وضرب الله مثلا قرية كانت آمنة مطمئنة يأتيها رزقها رغدا من كل مكان فكفرت بأنعم الله فذاق الله لباس الجوع والخوف لباس الخوف والجوع لباس الخوف والجوع Respected friends and elders, Ulamai Kiram, Mufadi Kiram, and dear listeners, just mentioning yesterday's, in yesterday's recital, although today we recited the 14th Jews of the Quran, but towards the latter part of the 13th Jews of the Quran, the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. That's the most amazing. Where he made the dua, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharra. He said, Oh Allah, I left my wife and child in barren land. This is when he left Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam and his mother in Makkah al-Mukarra. No water, no vegetation. Why am I doing it? Because it is your sacred house, O oh Allah, establish salah and turn people towards my family. Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadin ghayri li zar'in inda baytika al-muharra. Rabbana li yuqimu salata faj'al af'inatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim wa razaquhum min al-thamarati la'allahum yashkurun. How many millions of people go for Umrah today? Millions but billions go for Umrah. And how many millions will be going for Hajj this year, inshallah? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us, take us year in, year out for Umrah, and inshallah take us for Hajj every single year, inshallah. So here this is the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, leaving his only child which Allah had blessed him in old age, at that time only Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, with his mother, in barren land, no vegetation, basically in the desert, which is also deserted. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us a lesson that wherever I put you, be content with it. Here Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he knows it's the decree, the order and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has to undertake that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he left his wife and his child. It's written regarding the incident of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam. Every time he was trying to look over his shoulder as he was leaving them. What will happen? But again, being, having and, and you know this, this amazing faith towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being optimistic. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after my family. Because they were about to establish the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, father and son, which we made mention in the first juz of the Quran in Surah Al Baqarah, that after the completion of building of the Kaaba, Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'ul alim. Oh Allah, accept it from us. Now if you read the life of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam after the Kaaba was being built, after the Kaaba was built, I mean how would the people come? How would the people flock towards the Kaaba? So Allah told Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, you make the announcement, I will make sure that it will reach every corner, every space, every heart, every human being. And today, how many billions of people flock towards the Kaaba? They go for Umrah, and you'll find that people are going for Hajj year upon year. So again, this is the, the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And then he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in just a couple of lines further. This is the latter part of the 13th chapter of the Quran. Where he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing him in old age. Ismail and Ishaq. Alhamdulillah, Hilladi Wahabani Alan Kibari Ismail wa Ishaq. Inna Rabbi Lassani Uddua. Further on, 
رب اجعل لي مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء Allah make me and my children steadfast on salah. That's the first dua he made. Today, me and you, we made dua for our children of prosperity. We made dua for our children of health. Here Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa sallam, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati, salati. Salah is important. He put salah as to be the main thing. And then further up, Rabbana ufil li wa li walidayja wa li al-mu'minina yawma yaqoomu al-hisab. Allah forgive me, my parents and the believers on the day of reckoning. So always making dua for his parents. How often do me and you make dua for our parents? Irrespective whether they are living on the face of this earth or not. We should regularly make dua for our parents. Whether they are healthy or ill. Generally, me and you will make dua for our parents when they are struck with a calamity. When they are struck, when they are struck with difficulty in their life. When they have reached the old age, that's only when we make dua for our parents. Well, when our parents, the other way around, they would make dua for us from the very inception we were born. Right up until now, you ask every father, how often do you make dua for your child? They will say, we make dua for our children every single day without fail. You ask that child, how often do you make dua for your abba, for your father? The day when he gives me something, then should I make dua for him. The day he doesn't know why must I make dua for him. So we have become a people, we have become a person where we want something that someone must give us, then only we make dua for the person. We should make dua for every single person regularly, irrespective whether we are receiving something or not. It is our duty that we make dua for every single Muslim brethren on the face of this earth, male or female. And further on in tonight's recital, we also recited Surah to Hijr, which is in relation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the verses Allah says, We have revealed the Quran and we will protect it. So Allah Himself will personally protect the Quran. We do not need to worry that someone will alter the Quran or they will add to the Quran, they will take away from the Quran. People have tried, even in the time of Rasulullah وسلم, the challenge was there. Create a surah just like Inna a'tainaka al-gawthar. Yet nobody could come forth and create a short surah. We're not asking you to create a surah like Surah Al-Baqarah, which consists of two and a half Jews. What I'm saying is a so short, short surah consisting approximately a line and a half. Come forward and cre uh, create a short surah. Yet nobody had the courage to, or, or muster the courage to create a short chapter, a short surah like in the Gothar. And nor will anyone on the day, on the t on right up until the day of Qiyamah will have the courage to do so at all whatsoever. So again, we don't need to worry about the Qur'an. What we need to be concerned about, how me and you can make amal on the Qur'an. The messages that are in the Qur'an, the injunctions of, and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are in the Qur'an, how we can adopt it in our lives. And amazing, very fascinating, very amazing, you know, when India and Pakistan were one and when the British were ruling, India, Pakistan, it was all one as India at that time. When the British were ruling, and at that time, the British wanted to get rid of the Muslims. So when the British wanted to get rid of the Muslims, they thought the best, the best way to get rid of the Muslims or wipe out the Muslims is to wipe out which is very dear, something which is very dear to them. And that is obviously the Quran, which is very dear to the Muslims. So they decided, okay, they went round, they started taking all the Qur'ans from the Masajids, from the homes, forcefully. They, they had to give up their Qur'an. And as they piled up the Qur'an and they were about to burn the Qur'an, there was an old man there. And, they, and, and these are thought-provoking words. He said, 
you can burn as many Quran as you want and as you wish, but you cannot burn the heart of that very same child who has memorized the entire Quran. You can burn as many Mus'haf as you want, but you can never burn the heart of that child who has memorized the entire Quran. So Allah has protected and preserved the Quran. Generations upon generations, you'll find that people are becoming half of the Quran at the age of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You, Alhamdulillah, it's absolutely fascinating. But people are becoming half of the Quran. Allah has given that ability. Even at the age of 60, 70, 80 years of age, Allah has given the ability that, to the elderly to memorize the Qur'an. So again, Allah will protect and preserve the Qur'an. It is me and you, we need to adopt the Qur'an into our lives. That's the main thing. Moving on further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَبِّ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ Inform my bondsmen, I am forgiving and merciful and also, and also I will, I'm also giving my severe punishment to those who disobey me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also merciful and forgiving. It's an opportunity for us in the month of Ramadan, it's a month of forgiveness where we learn to forgive one another and at the same time ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And how unfortunate that we are in the month of Ramadan and we don't get the chance to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. It's an opportunity brothers that we see this month that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And to do that is just seclusion, a couple of minutes to yourself. Ponder, contemplate, how do one make, how does one make dua in seclusion you cry unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sins that you have committed do it in absolute seclusion nobody can see you and then you cry and then you cry very dearly wholeheartedly sincerely reflecting pondering contemplating upon the sins that you have committed and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness at the same time it's an opportunity for us to do it in the month of Ramadan. So brothers, let's make sure that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. One of the surahs which we recited was Surah Al-Nahal in regards to the bee. But one of the verses which I would like to make mention is absolutely amazing and fascinating. And that is, وَالْخَيْلَ وَالْبِغَالَ وَالْحَمِيرَ لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَ وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And Allah, had, and, and, and Allah has made these beautiful animals, horse, mule, donkey, Use it as a means of conveyance, and I will create which you do not know. I will continue to create which you do not know. Obviously, going back in the times where they would use the camel, the mule, the donkey, and so forth as a mode of transport. Today, alhamdulillah, look at the mode of transport. From where to where? We, we, were, in, we were in a time where in the 80s and 90s we used to have a Datsun. Now here we have those beautiful cars, of Bentleys and Rolls Royce, the most luxurious. There was a time where they had to travel from one, from one country to another country in, on, on a ship. And now today we have, look at the first class cabins where you can take a shower and sleep as well. I had the privilege of not traveling in the first class but seeing it. It's absolutely mind-boggling when you go into the first-class cabin. I'm talking of Emirates. When you, when you go inside the first-class cabin and you see it, that people take shower, just like they're coming out of the hotel. How will, how will you, you know, above 50, 60,000 feet above sea level, and here they're taking a shower and they're sleeping. They have a beautiful bed to lay themselves. So from where to where, in San, how we have progressed from where to where. So this is an opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue creating. Allah will give us the ability and the mindset and the intellect to continue to create. But remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses that individual. Further on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا we can never count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if you try. 
We can never count the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you look at it, I mean, just for a moment, let's just think. For every time your heart beats, you have to pay a penny. We'll be bankrupt before, before we can reach a certain, certain age. Or for every blink that we take, we have to pay for that. So again, this is all the, you know, amazing. It is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The eyes continue to blink. You're looking at me and you continue blinking. And there is constant water circling. Then your blood stream is continuing from one side to the other side and moving. Who, who does that? Who made insan like that? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of us, if we look at each one of us here, our fingerprint is different. You can have the, you know, the two most identical twins, but the fingerprint will be different. And that's the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will continue creating and He will continue innovating as well. And we have to understand that that happens with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ If you don't know, ask the people of knowledge. Here we need to understand something, and I've been very bold here at this moment in time, that unfortunately when it comes to deeny matters, we tend to Google it, we tend to look at the internet. But when it comes to anything else, then unfortunately we will not Google it, we will wait for the right person to speak to. But unfortunately what happens is, I have, you know, I have a, a passion for this as well, because unfortunately we have become a community, a nation, that when it comes to Islam, we will not go to the people of knowledge. All of a sudden, we will check it up on the internet, and that's it, we are well versed. Remember, you can have the Ains and the Qaf, you can pronounce those as good as you can, but that doesn't mean that you know Arabic. A little bit of Arabic that you know, you know, you learned how to say, what's the door, Babun, car, and all of a sudden now you're big sheikh. This, this is the reality, unfortunately, this is the reality of what's happening today. Is that, you know, a little bit of Arabic we know. So, sayyaratun, and then we know, okay, qalamsuatun, or qalamun, and then we know, babun, or, you know, we know all these little, little words, and all of a sudden, wallahi, wallahi, all of a sudden, all you know is wallahi, wallahi. So unfortunately, the little bit of Arabic we know, unfortunately, that we, we, we hold that to be as hard. I mean, ask Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's not something which is easy. The years that we go and study and in depth of it, it's absolutely difficult. But Alhamdulillah, Allah blesses that we go through those years after year and we graduate and we become a scholar. But yet we can never say, me and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are sitting here, we can never say we have accomplished everything. We are still learning and will continue to learn. And th that's the most amazing part of scholars that they will continue to learn because something new will come. And I've said this and I will say it on numerous occasions as well. I have teachers who have been teaching Sahih al-Bukhari for the past 26 years. He says that every time I open the book, I find something new. 26 years. Me and one of them, you know, we've done it one year. And Alhamdulillah, yes, we had the opportunity of opening it over time and time and again. But this is a scholar saying 26 years from the beginning till the end, yet I find something new every single time. But now all of a sudden, you know, a little bit of Arabic, we know. That's it. Come and ask me. I know all the Muslim aside. But when you are, when you are becoming a doctor, when you're studying medicine, Never would you learn from the textbooks. You will go to the university, you'll be educated by the respective lecturer, you will study, and so forth. There's a whole system behind it. But you cannot become a doctor by studying the textbooks. Likewise, we are the same thing. You cannot become a scholar by merely studying the text, the, the, the books itself. You have to sit at the feet of the scholars to learn true knowledge. That's what is true. 
You have to sit at the feet of scholars to acquire that knowledge. We may know Arabic. We will be very good, you know, well versed in the Arabic language. But if we don't sit at the feet of the scholars, we will not understand the hadith correctly as to why this hadith is in this particular bar, this particular chapter. Why did Imam Bukhari put it here? And I say, and I will say this, and I will terminate. You must remember this. Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. Every hadith in them you will find a sahih, but every sahih hadith are not only in these two books. That all, all the ahadith in these two particular books are sahih, but every sahih hadith of the Prophet وسلم, are not only in these books. There are other books which have sahih hadith as well, and have stronger chains as well. So we need to remember that when it comes to knowledge, don't sit and Google it. Ask the scholars, acquire the knowledge, and there be content with it. Unfortunately, today what we do is we like to ask various different scholars. So we'll ask this scholar, we'll ask that scholar. And then whichever is the best of opinion, we'll go and take that. Be content with one scholar. Grab hold on to him, and whatever answer he gives you, fabiha. We're happy with it. If the, if the scholar says that, you know what, I need to reflect, I need to go back, I will check it up, that doesn't mean that the scholar doesn't know, or he's not an accomplished scholar. But rather, it needs to, it's like Imam Malik, it's like how many other scholars you'll find it. And I don't know. How many questions were asked to various different senior scholars, and they said, I don't know the answer to it. I don't know the answer to it. Fair enough, you don't know the answer, we will go back and we'll come back with the answer. Or we will ask a much senior scholar who has, who has far greater experience in a certain field, we will ask him and he will give an answer and I will give you the answer. But when it comes to Deen, brothers, be very, very careful. Ask the scholars of Deen. When it comes to Islam, ask the scholars of Deen. When it comes to any religion, any questions in relation to Deen, please ask the scholars. They will, they will be gladly to help and assist and guide uh, guide the Ummah in the right direction. Remember, we will never tell you anything that is wrong for you. We will tell you always the right thing, and that's the way forward, inshallah. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gives us a true understanding of deen.